What do all these drugs have in common? Sertraline, fluoxetine, peroxetine. Think you know? Let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. On this channel we explore the world of psychology so that we can better understand ourselves and others. Previously we've explored the biological explanations for OCD and as part of that we explored how some research has looked at how changes in neurotransmitter levels, such as serotonin, have been associated with OCD. This now brings us to drug treatments. What do all those drugs I mentioned at the start have in common? Well, all these drugs are examples of SSRIs, a specific type of medication sometimes prescribed to people suffering with OCD. I guess you may have heard of the drug fluoxetine, which is sold under the brand name Prozac, which is an example of this kind of drug. SSRIs stand for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. And from its name, you can see that this drug aims to affect the level of serotonin in the brain. But how do these drugs do this? Let's find out. To understand how these drugs work, we need to briefly go over how synaptic transmission works. Once we've done that, we will then be able to see how the drugs affect that process. Your nervous system is thought to contain somewhere around 100 billion neurons, with your brain containing approximately 80% of them. These nerve cells transmit signals electrically and chemically. Within a neuron, signals are transmitted electrically, where the electric signal starts at the dendrites and passes along the axon to the terminal buttons. But between neurons, signals are transmitted chemically. This process is called synaptic transmission. Neurons do not actually touch one another. Each neuron is separated from the next neuron by a tiny gap called the synapse. Synapses allow messages to travel from one neuron to an adjacent neuron by transmitting signals chemically using neurotransmitters. In other words, synaptic transmission is where neurons send chemical messages across the synapse, which is the gap between neurons. When the impulse reaches the end of the axon, it arrives at the presynaptic terminal. Pre meaning before, so presynaptic means before the synapse. These are made up of small structures called vesicles and contain neurotransmitters. The electrical impulse that has travelled down the axon triggers the release of the neurotransmitter, which then diffuses across the synapse, also known as the synaptic cleft. And these neurotransmitters are received by receptors on the dendrites of the next neuron, specifically known as post-synaptic receptor sites, post meaning after, so post-synaptic equals after the synapse. The chemical, the neurotransmitter, is then converted back into an electrical impulse and carries on down the axon of the next neuron. Enzymes are released to break down any neurotransmitters still in the synapse, also, some neurotransmitters go through a process called reuptake, where any excess neurotransmitters still there are absorbed back to the presynaptic terminal. Vesicles are replenished with new and reused neurotransmitters ready for the next impulse. Now, to bring this back to drug therapy, many drugs act by interfering with the events at the synapse. We've seen in a previous video that lower levels of serotonin have been associated with OCD. So, if SSRIs can increase the amount of serotonin, then they should be able to reduce the symptoms of OCD. And remember, SSRIs stand for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. To inhibit something means to stop it. So these drugs focus only on serotonin, and then they stop or inhibit the process of reuptake to the presynaptic terminal, which means more serotonin is in the synapse, which means there is more chance of serotonin neurotransmitters being received by the postsynaptic receptor sites and passing on the signal. Now, let's evaluate the biological treatments for OCD. Supporting evidence for the use of drugs to treat OCD comes from the work of Sumro et al. in 2009. They reviewed 17 studies that combined included over 3,000 participants. These studies compared SSRIs to placebos in the treatment of OCD in adults. 
The results show that SSRIs were more effective than placebo for OCD, at least in the short term, being specifically effective in reducing OCD symptoms between 6 to 13 weeks after treatment. One of the positives of drug therapy, in contrast to cognitive treatments like cognitive behavioural therapy, is that drug treatments can work quicker than CBT and also don't have the demands of motivation and commitment that is needed to complete a CBT programme. Often CBT may not be suitable or helpful for some people because it requires lots of discussion with a therapist and homework assignments to improve their way of thinking. This can be quite demanding and requires the patient to fully engage with the treatment which might be quite difficult for them to do. Drug therapy on the other hand does not place such demands on the patient so biological treatments could be argued to be more effective in this regard. However, one of the limitations of biological treatments in the case of OCD is that they are often treating the symptoms that people experience rather than the cause. In other words, just because someone suffering from OCD has different levels of serotonin does not necessarily mean that this is the cause of OCD. It might just be a symptom. There may be other broader factors involved that need exploring that are actually the real cause. For example, Cromer et al. in 2007 found that over 50% of the OCD patients in their sample had a traumatic event in the past. So, whilst drug treatments may help in the short term with symptoms, if they are not really dealing with the cause of OCD, it could be argued that they are a rather limited and temporary form of treatment. A further limitation of drug treatment for OCD relates to side effects. In the research by Sumro et al. in 2009, they report that whilst the SSRIs were more effective than placebo in the short term, there were clear side effects that included nausea, headaches and insomnia that were always reported. This means that biological treatments for OCD contrast poorly with other treatments like cognitive behavioural therapy which do not come with these side effects and therefore it could be argued that CBT will be a more positive experience for some people. Finally, in terms of comparison, cognitive behavioural therapy can be argued to be more empowering for the patient in contrast to biological drug treatments. This is because patients taking medication are more passive in the process, whereas CBT has the patient actively working to challenge and change their thoughts. This is helpful because it can give the patient a sense of control over their OCD, which they may not feel with the use of drug treatments. If you like this video and would like to see more, give me some positive reinforcement with that like button and maybe leave a comment below. For more on the topic of psychopathology and mental disorders, check out this playlist for more. And if you would like more information relating to mental health, whether to help you or others, do check out the links in the description for some helpful online resources and support services. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.